in chemistry, we have available to us a fairly diverse collection of materials that we can use to make supersaturated solutions. Uh, and supersaturated solutions are really kind of interesting. Most of the supersaturated solutions that we get to work with are pretty unstable. And you can make them and cross your fingers that they'll last a little while. Uh, there is one supersaturated solution that's easy to make in a laboratory with inexpensive materials that is real stable and can be used over and over again, and that is uh, sodium acetate. And that's what we're going to take a look at today real quick. I have up here a flask, and if you look at it just to begin with, you'll notice that the solution inside here is kind of a yellowish color. That's because this particular solution is, is now almost three years old, and it's been used over and over again in the process of heating it and cooling it and heating it and recycling it. It's lost a little bit of its color, or a little bit of its lack of color, I guess is a better way to say it, and it's picked up a little bit of yellowishness to it. But um, I have talked to people that have kept a supersaturated solution of sodium acetate for years and years, uh, and they'll use it over and over and over, and I personally had a two liter flask that I had with sodium acetate in it that was probably 20 years old that I'd made way back of when I first started teaching. So, I mean, they do last, they're pretty stable, and they can be used over and over and recycled. So, what we want to get across is how do you get a, how do you make, first of all, a supersaturated solution? Generally, it's done by heating. Uh, a quantity of solid with liquid, you drive the temperature up above the point where all of the solid will dissolve so you don't have a supersaturated solution. Then as it cools back off, at the point where it reach sat reaches saturation, instead of crystallizing out, it continues to cool back down. And so now what you have in here is actually more material dissolved than the handbook says can be dissolved. Consequently, the term supersaturated. Now, to get it back out of solution, there are a number of ways it can, it can be done. You can shake the solution. Sodium acetate's kind of nice in the sense that it's pretty stable. Shaking won't ordinarily cause it to fall out. Sometimes just a piece of dust falling into it will cause the solution to fall out and solidify. Again, sodium acetate is pretty stable. That normally won't happen. About the only way you can get sodium acetate to recrystallize out and go back uh, to a saturated solution, or in this case it'll go almost to a solid when we take a look at it, is to give it a couple of crystals. Drop a couple crystals in there and it's almost like the rest of the sodium acetate in the beaker sees these crystals falling down inside and says, oh, that's how we're supposed to line up. Let's all gang up around the outside of it, and you'll see when the crystals fall in here that it just kind of like, hey, guys, here's the way we're supposed to line up. That's the crystal structure. Quick, let's all get together, and you'll observe what's going on. The other thing that's kind of interesting about this one is that the reaction is pretty exothermic. So I'm going to take a wood splint now and just get a few crystals of sodium acetate and pull the stopper out and shake them in. And you can see, almost instantly, all those other sodium acetate ions that were in there are now getting together and solidifying. Uh, they found the crystal structure, and in a very, very short period of time, it's gone in. Now, can't tell this on camera, but the bottom of this is quite warm. Not so warm I can't hold on to it, but it's heated up. Is there a practical use for this? Indeed there is. You sell these heat packs, you may have seen them. It's, uh, it says the heat, it actually says the heat of solution pack, but they'll sell these in camping stores, etc., that you can put into a glove or your pants pocket or whatever you want. Uh, they're recyclable. You can warm it up uh, and it'll go back, but it's got a little thing down here. I don't know if you can see that piece of metal that's in there. This thing, when it's bent, and I'm going to just reach in here and give it a bend, and then move it out. Whoops, I'm going to give it a bigger bend. Maybe a huge bend. Maybe a gigantic bend. Maybe a 
been in a different direction. Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right. And again, you can see that crystallization starting to take place. And this, once again, gets quite warm. You can recycle this, put it in some boiling water, put it in some hot water, let it go until it all goes back to a clear solution. It's ready to go again. You do the same thing with this flask that I used before. Stick it on a hot plate, heat it for a little while. It'll go back into it, put the stopper on it, set it on the shelf, leave it there until next year when I need to use it. it that in itself is really kind of neat. Um, something that's a little different, but the same situation, another example of a sodium acetate supersaturated solution. I suppose you could use this in earth science if you wanted to demonstrate the formation of stalactites, stalagmites. In this case, it would be a stalagmite because we're going to see it grow from the bottom up. In a lot of ways, it is the same process that does produce stalactites and stalagmites because that is a precipitation of a crystal out of solution. It's not a super saturated solution, but it is a solution and the, and the stuff crystallizes out when drops of liquid hit the surface. So again, sodium acetate super saturated solution inside the burette. I'm going to open the stopcock. Now, a couple of tricks with this that make it work, because you might be looking at this going, this looks like it might be kind of tough to deal with. Uh, first of all, if you close the top, which is always a good idea, Take that off the top, because it doesn't run out very well if the top is sealed. There's no air pressure pushing down, or very little air pressure pushing down from the top, and that kind of messes up the process. The other thing is that when you put this in, the trick is I always have a little distilled water in the bottom around the stopcock. So I'll put in enough distilled water to fill up this part and just above the stopcock. Because if I put that supersaturated solution down that far, and when I turn the stopcock, sometimes that's enough twist, just like that little tab was in there, to cause crystallization to start taking place. I mean, it's neat to watch it go up inside the burette. That's fun. But it's, it's a booger to clean out. So it's just you know, something you want to probably avoid. Uh, and then after I've filled it, I'll put maybe, again, a, a half a milliliter distilled water on top so that I don't get any evaporation to the top that causes crystals to form that shoots it down. Now, if I'm lucky here, and I'm good with the burette, I'll get some drips here. The first few shouldn't do anything because they're just distilled water. After they fall out, then hopefully that supersaturated solution is going to come through. When it hits the crystals on the platform here, I'm hoping that it'll start to solidify. And if I'm really doing a good job with it and as the drops fall down, I'll start to build a stalagmite up from the uh, base here. And so we'll take a look at it and see how it works. And we'll cross our fingers that, in fact, it's going to start building up. And yes, it is. Stalagmite formation. There it is. Millions of years happening before your eyes. This is Mammoth Cave cut down into a 20 second process. Are you counting the drops? That's another whole process. We can do reaction rates here. It's <laughs> ta-da! Yep, well, we can start another one. Earthquakes occasionally occur, or vandalism in the cave, and <laughs> millions of years go by, and here we are again. When I was in graduate school, on the weekends, I used to do a lot of caving. Here she comes again. It's just a little bit different way to do supersaturated solution of sodium acetate.
you notice when it goes a little slower, the column's a little bit more uniform. And I was just about to say it's less likely to fall over, but I can see this one starting to tilt. 